Welcome back. Um, I'm Broward County Commissioner Stacey Ritter here at the Tamarack Cafe Diner in the shopping center at the corner of Knob Hill Road and McNabb Road in the beautiful city of Tamarack, right in the heart of the district I represent, District 3. Um, if you want to reach me, my email address is sritter at broward.org or the phone number is 954-357-7003. got any questions about anything you've seen today or anything that happens in the county, um, how do they get a hold of you, Earl? They can get a hold of me through my email, Earl, at Mocker media.com uh, and my website is uh, mockermedia.com okay m-a-u C-K-E-R. Um, this is Earl Mocker, who is currently a Lighthouse Point City Commissioner, but he's the former editor of the Sun Sentinel for 30 years, just recently retired. Right. In the past year? Uh, in August. So oh, gosh, yeah. About six months. Okay. And before that, he, he, you've been reporting and editing? In right. I was a reporter. I was an editor. I covered courts. I covered police. I did all of that. I even got a police chief indicted on a series of investigative stories I did way back in 1973. <laughs> Which is a feather in the cap of any reporter right. to get an elected, was, uh, well, not elected even. But and it ultimately is what led me down here because I won a contest. I met the an editor in Illinois who later was recruited to Fort Lauderdale, and then he brought me down here as his managing editor in 1980. And where in Illinois? In uh, Rockford, Illinois. Which is? Which is north of Chicago, actually, wow. and west of Chicago. Um, aren't you glad you're not there this winter? Yes, I, it, winters are tough up there. Oh, we moved from Arlington Heights in 1974, yeah. which is suburban Chicago. I know, right where it is. The weather was just yeah, horrible. horrible, horrible, horrible. So, um, in the first segment, we talked about Earl Walker as Lighthouse Point City Commissioner. Right now, now we're going to talk about Earl Walker as editor of the Sun Sentinel, or media, media guru in general. Mm -hmm. When did you start in the news business? I actually started as a printer back in, um, after I got out of the Air Force. I was in the Air Force during the Vietnam War. Just to make it clear, I wasn't in Vietnam. I was in Okinawa most of my duty, but I was in the Air Force. When I got out, I had no skills other than I could type. So I got a job punching tape for linotype machines. The union... You realize my children have no idea. No, I know they don't. I know they don't. I was explaining that to somebody the other day. They had no idea what I was talking about. But the International Typographical Union wouldn't give me time to go to college. And I was on the GI Bill and a military scholarship. And they said no, so they moved me into the newsroom because they had no union. And then the rest is history. I ended up declaring journalism as a major, and I got my degree from Southern Illinois University with a, with a mass communications degree in journalism. And then, um, so that's really how I started in journalism. And I was a reporter for a number of years and then moved on and became a city editor and then a, a news editor, a deputy managing editor. I went to Springfield, Missouri as managing editor for only one year with Gannett and then the editor of the Fort Lauderdale News asked me to join him in December of 1980, so that's how I got down to Fort Lauderdale. So you've been here for, what is that? 30, 30 years. years. Right, I was managing editor of the Fort Lauderdale News, and we merged those papers in 1982. I became managing editor of both papers, and then in 1994, I was named editor when my editor retired. So I was editor for 16 years, managing editor for 14 years. Okay, so... I, I read an interview that you did when you were retiring with the Sun Sentinel that said when you, when you, the newsroom used to be filled with noise and clacking typewriters and the ringing of phones, and it's completely changed these days. It now, has how changed. Has it changed. It's changed in that obviously the internet has changed the whole dynamic of the news business. But I would also say this, and I say this when I'm consulting. There's no better time to be a journalist than right now. There are so many opportunities for journalists to be in with the, the, the blogging they can do, the kind of multimedia opportunities that are available. It really is a great time to be a journalist and there's probably never a more important time for journalists to be relevant because there's so much noise out there that a journalist and a credible journalist needs to be out there making sure that they are protecting the individual's right to know and understand and doing the kind of work that they should be doing as credible, hard-working, dedicated journalists. Well, that's interesting you say that because most of the ones I know don't are, are not happy with the state of journalism. They're worried about their jobs. That's because they're in a transitional period. And you know, for those of us who have been around for a long, long time, it is a difficult adjustment. But somebody coming right out of the university right now has so many options, so many opportunities to go in so many directions that journalism offers them. 
And like I said, it's more important forever than ever for a journalist to be credible, uh, to be able to rise above the noise that's out there and work on behalf of their constituents as a true journalist, where it's more important than ever. So how do you find credibility in this age of all this noise? Well, just anybody like a, throws up a, a website or a blog and becomes a quote, journalist? It's, it's just like a public official, Stacey. A, a journalist has to be credible or they're not relevant or they're not of value. Uh, if you lose your credibility, you have nothing. And unfortunately, there are a lot of folks out there that simply have an agenda, a political agenda, a social agenda, whatever it might be, uh, and they're not credible. They, they are there for a specific purpose. Uh, an honest and true journalist will be held accountable to the public that they serve. They will have standards. People will know what their standards are. They'll have ethics. And they should be held to those ethical standards if they're going to be a journalist, a, a true journalist. Okay, and, and, I, and, I see, and I see that there's a difference between a true journalist and, and a blogger who just throws up a laptop. Anybody that has a laptop or a, a cell phone can be a blogger. That yeah. doesn't make them credible. No, but it, it can make them relevant. It, it can make them it relevant. Can, it can provide an audience for them. But if an audience, and one of my concerns with some local bloggers is government officials will call them and that gives them credibility. Why would they even do that? Why would they allow a somebody that is not credible because they are fearful of this particular blogger? Why? They they shouldn't because it just gives them some dignity that they don't deserve. It happens all the time. I know it does. And it's well you figure you don't you don't bite the hand that feeds you. I mean, I'm assuming that's what the, the mentality is. If you don't bite the hand that feeds you, if you're the one feeding, you're not going to get bitten by it. That's right. But I'll tell you this. At the Sun Sentinel, anybody that was a blogger, and there are a number of bloggers at the Sun Sentinel, they are expected to, to maintain the same sort of standards as any reporter, as any columnist would, and they are held accountable. I used to read those blogs. Other editors read those blogs. And there was any number of times that I would go in and say, that's coming down. We're not going to allow that. And one of the concerns that some of the reporters would have with the internet, and they would come to me, and even though I wasn't technically in charge of the internet, any content that came from a reporter that was on that internet was my responsibility, and I would go over and I would take it down if I felt that it didn't meet certain standards. What about the, the commenters that get to say anything that they want? You know, you really don't want to censor that, but there becomes a time when it gets to be so toxic that you just have to have some sort of regulations in place not to just allow any anonymous person to say anything that they want to say. It just gets to be so nasty, but at the same time, you got to be careful about censoring it because what you want to do is create a community forum. But frankly, somebody with agenda and they want to be an announce, uh, anonymous, is that really creating a dialogue and a forum, uh, or is it just allowing somebody a vehicle to, to get attention? And at some point, you have to draw the line. That's why we're called editors. Editors edit, and they should go in there and say, that is inappropriate, whether it's a story, a blogger, or a commenter, and say, I'm editing that. That's what we do. That's what we were hired to do. But that has, that has completely changed because of the Internet. Stuff gets thrown up so quickly. Right. It, and again, it, I could only be, as the editor of the Sun Sentinel, I could only be accountable for that content, which was under my responsibility. I couldn't be responsible for content that was not under my control, nor should I be. I mean, each one of those has to be regulated on their own basis, and any audience out there interested in that blogger should take the time to find out what is that individual's background, and are they credible, or do they simply have an agenda? It, it seems that, that what has become news has changed, though. The definition has changed. I mean, I, I remember when I was younger reading the morning paper, and even after the Internet, where I was reading news. Now I'm reading about, you know, I, I've read about my haircut, which I don't think is news, and I've read about, you know... But you're looking at it as a traditional consumer of news, and it's not traditional anymore. It's anything but traditional, and I go back to my original point. That's why it's more important forever for journalists to have credibility, so they can hold up standards and ethics and say, you know, our agenda isn't there. And I, and I like to use the word, a pure journalist, if there is any such animal, maybe there's not. But at least they should do everything within their power to be credible, fair, ethical, and should be able to stand by what they write any time and say, this is it. It's not based on personal opinion. It's not based on an agenda I have. It's based on the fact that I'm credible, honest, and have integrity. Okay. Will you stay for one more segment? Sure. All right. We'll be right back.